Mark Weather Show. Let's get right into special winter weather coverage here. Out west here, this is where things really start to get active, and this is why the pattern is so active. We got very strong storms moving in to California and eventually Oregon and Washington later in the weekend. Look at these totals, three to five inches of liquid. In the higher elevations, we're talking in excess of three feet, possibly even more. But take a look at that. Beneficial rains for California. This is good news. It will break the drought. Back east, this is where we get into that tremendous amount of moisture. Mississippi River Valley, Ohio River Valley, extending up towards the mid-Atlantic. That's where we're going to get into this weekend and early next week's winter storm. Let's take a look at those surface maps for midday or the middle portion of the weekend and the latter portion of the weekend, that low pressure starts to ride up along this stalled out frontal boundary that will drape itself across the just south of the Ohio Valley and extending down towards the Mississippi River Valley. This is where the low pressure system will develop right near the Gulf Coast and push up and ride up along this and it will produce snow, sleet, freezing rain and then south of that frontal boundary, mainly rain. But that's gonna be very interesting to see once it gets up to the Ohio Valley, uh, how much cold air gets drawn down with the high pressure systems anchored fir firmly entrenched here to the north. And as the storm really starts to get cranking, we see later on Sunday and into Monday here, the storm rides up along this front and starts to arc more east, just south of the Mason-Dixon line area. And that's where we'll start to get some colder air bleeding in just in front and behind this low pressure system. So even places like Maryland and Southern Pennsylvania could start to really get in on the heavier snowfall totals. And uh, we'll continue to watch that here at Media Mark, even Southern New England, extending over towards upstate New York, Ohio, will be getting in on some of the wraparound as well. So we'll continue to watch it here. Let's take a look at those snowfall totals. This is the most important aspect of the storm. The yellow boxes, of course, the yellow outline boxes, those are the quarter inch of ice. Well, first we're gonna look at the Ohio Valley here, extending up towards portions of Missouri, Indiana, and Ohio here. That's where in that narrow stripe, we could see up to eight to 12 inches in some of these areas. So GFS and NAM and Euro are really starting to come together on a solution here. And as that system arcs to the northeast here, you can see it draws in some warmer air, especially just south of the Mason-Dixon line here where we start to get into sleet and freezing rain. Mainly, it's I'm thinking it's mainly just north of Washington, D.C. where we get that heavy mix. And then you go quickly into southern Pennsylvania where we get into those heavy snowfall totals near the PA Turnpike extending north towards Interstate 80. And it's all going to stay snow. The Poconos, Catskills, southern tier of New York, Binghamton could be getting in on some heavy snow. Scranton over towards Monticello. The lower Hudson River Valley, so southeastern and southern New England, eventually eastern New England. We're going to continue to watch that here at Media Mark, and of course, the main story with this system will be the heavy snowfall. It looks like, as I shown you, let me step off the map here. Areas such as Cleveland could be getting in on this as well. Dayton and extending towards Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. You are in the crosshairs as well. Uh, the heaviest snow might just stay south of Erie, Pennsylvania. It's going to be very close there, but southern tier of New York. North central Pennsylvania really could get, especially Interstate 80, basically 80 miles north and south of Interstate 80, lots of snow, and then extending towards the New York Pennsylvania border as well. So I'll continue to watch that. I'll fine tune these amounts as uh, we get more model data and uh, only slight changes are expected during the next 24 to 48 hours because the storm is only about, you know, it's getting closer to that storm point. So this is, uh, we're honing in on a solution here and these are the snowfall totals that you could be looking at with this system. Another major winter storm on a very active winter so far this year. So there you have it. And a lot of these totals Monday in southern New England, we get, we'll get a wraparound effect here instead of an overrunning type scenario. Out ahead of the system, it'll be overrunning and behind it, you'll get that wraparound moisture in portions of especially eastern southern Pennsylvania, Maryland, extending up towards portions of southern New York State, 
and then over towards New England. We'll start to get that wrap around, maybe even as far north as the southern tier of New York. That's going to do it here at Media Mark. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Media Mark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com. Here's a five-day outlook for my hometown viewers in the Susquehanna region of New York, Susquehanna region of Northeast Pennsylvania, Scranton, Binghamton, Telmyra. Look at this here. We start off Friday very cold, well below zero. But Saturday will be our warmest day here. We'll approach 30 degrees, but don't get used to it because once we warm up here, the system moves in Saturday night. We could get an inch or two by morning Sunday. Sunday, we continue with a couple inches of snow. We might get a brief break Sunday night, only for a couple hours. And then after midnight, it looks like things could get cranking again, especially 2, 3, 4 a.m., just before the Monday morning commute across northeast Pennsylvania, southern tier of New York, where we could start to pile on more snow, additional accumulations likely on Monday into Monday night. The system may not shut off until after midnight Monday night. So there's your weather outlook, snowfall totals, and I want to make note of something. After the system passes, models are indicating later on next middle to latter portion next week, we could be having low temperatures in the minus 10 to minus 20 degree range. That's gonna do it here at Meteomark. Mm -hmm.